this deck out, but Ian has adopted the two Polycranos in the main deck, which is a huge incentive here. So if we can get to six mana, you're pretty likely that you're going to get milled enough where it's going to be online to to escape it and hope that that's enough for game one before we get uh, a couple other counter spells in it uh, in Ian's deck to be able to prepare him for it. Considering that Ian wasn't super happy with his decision for this weekend, I mean, this is one of the matchups that he's quite prepared for with this Pelucranos, wouldn't you say? Yeah. Yeah, I would say that. Pelucranos is also has just been pretty decent against these aggressive decks as well. And there we go, right on cue. In the <laughs> Pelucranos, we see a little smile from both players. Um, yeah, as prepared as you can be with that card. Putting two escape cards into your main deck really shifts the dynamic by a ton. You don't think two cards in an 80-card deck should be that big of a deal, but it really is. Thieves Guild Enforcer offering the trade here with this Neverwinter Dryad. This is a new addition from... Adventures in Forgotten Realms that we see in Ian's deck. It's able to go and find a forest for you and uh, get it onto the battlefield. Another additional piece of ramp, basically. Yeah. But uh, yep. with a land off the top here and cultivate in hand, and maybe this little uh, dryad will jump in the way later on. Yeah, that was a huge draw there. Getting land number three to be able to land cultivate. And now we'll see if uh, we want to fire off that drown in the lock. Decides not to. Save it for the bigger spells. Island and a swamp where the selections there for Burrell as a uh, little dryad is just going to hang back on defense here. Or is he going to get in one point of damage? Yeah, and might even not be trying to stay back on defense, just not trying to walk into a soaring thought thief right there. That's kind of a nightmare scenario where nickel and diming this rogue deck with the Sultan Ultimatum deck is not really what you need, anyways. So the one damage you know, missing out on that, even though we know um, the creature wasn't on the other side. It's just not worth the risk. Not at all. Rune Crab now joins in the fun with the Thieves Guild Enforcer. A really nice draw here and Heartless Act for Ian. And, and uh, he's, he's getting close to uh, being able to escape the Lucranos. Yeah, getting close already. And Java set this up quite well as well, getting Rune Crab into play last turn and with the thieves guild enforcer we should have that magical eight cards in graveyard to be able to cast into the story now even before pelucranos is able to escape from the graveyard and stop that from happening so an upkeep stop here gonna decide which creature he wants to deal with but uh there's the draw And another mill here for the rune crap. And we see when that creature's power turns to three, we know we have hit that threshold. So now end of the story is online. It's going to be pretty tough to imagine anything being cast besides that this turn, especially since Pelucranos can lower the amount of cards uh, below yep. that threshold. No cling to dust to deal with the Pelucranos this time around. So uh, the Neverwinter Dryad will jump in the way of the Thieves Guild Enforcer. Sacrifice, go find Forest. And now let's see what the follow-up play is going to be here for Zhao. Yeah, and I'm looking right now. Yeah, it just looks like the two clings are in the sideboard. Those are definitely going to be coming in to deal with these powerful creatures. But for now, it just has to beat it the old-fashioned way. <laughs> with removal. With removal, exactly. Mm -hmm. No counter spells. Drown in the Lock <laughs> doubling as a removal and a counter spell. The bane of everyone's existence for a little while in standard. Yes, no kidding. <laughs> So Heartless Act, Power Word, Kill, both available here, and Heartless Act's going to try and take care of the Thieves Guild Enforcer. What does Joao want to do about this, if anything? Yeah, and it's really rough to do anything here when you have that end of the story that's going to all of a sudden cost seven by the end of uh, Ian's next turn. So it's really tough to want to do anything. You're just like, okay, do your worst for this turn, uh, and then hope that we can drown in the lock the Pelucranos, after we play a land with Rune Crab the following turn. So a big decision point here for Joao. As soon as Ian gets priority, he'll be able to escape the Pelucranos. So he really wants to do it either now or on the upkeep. <laughs> And uh, the main thing that Joao is thinking here is there is two copies of Dwari Disruption. Getting mm -hmm. your end of the story, Dwari Disruption, is a really, really bad feeling here. So we saw that pause uh, to just cast the spell at end step, but then you do have to just discard. 
So Pelucranos is going to be escaped. And uh, Munchon, six cards in the graveyard, making it a little bit more difficult for Joao to uh, get that into the store going. Yeah, getting rid of really any six here doesn't matter too much from the Soul to Ultimatum side. But leaving four cards so that this is Drown in the Lockable. Mm -hmm. And decides to do that <laughs> instead of end of the story. Drown in the Lockable. I like that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so Rune Crab, this pesky little one drop. Just going to keep being annoying, keep milling things. But uh, does feed Pelucranos again, so Ian can't be too sad about that. Yeah, I can't be too upset. And yeah, now we're going to see this uh, looks to be the main. Oh, oh, yes. This is nice. nice. There you nice. go. I know the eye tyrant. Hive is such a great addition to this deck. Being able mm -hmm. to. Oh, but that was just as nice. What a top deck there. Emergent ultimatum right <laughs> off the top. It's like, oh, OK, you took my one threat with your land, but that's fine. I can just, you know, fire emergent ultimatum off. Let's go get some more big threats for you to deal with. And we saw the QR best the Sea God was gone, which is probably the best hit right now, realistically. Um, but we still have three of the, the more popular ones. Boren, Klex, Valky, and Allrun's Epiphany is kind of that go-to, mm -hmm. as well as QR best the Sea God is, you know, that other fourth option uh, based on the situation. But some nice hits here, and we'll see what Jao goes for. So here we go, Emergent Ultimatum. On the stack, what is the choice being made here from Joao? Alrin's Epiphany and Vorinclex gonna hit the battlefield and make merry with Joao's face here. Oh as uh, we'll have two turns to play. Oh, and, looks... and another ultimatum off the top. Are you kidding me? But we also have Professor Onyx here, and with Foreign Collect being able to double the amount of counters, yeah. we can just ultima ultimate this <laughs> Professor Onyx right now. Oh my goodness. That's going to be the game then, as uh, Professor Onyx will force discards here, taking Joao's life total below zero. So we're going to jump into game number two here. That was absolutely just, that was gross, Corey. Just yeah, gross. People People wonder how these ultimatum uh, decks really beat rogues. And well, that's how you, you're you able to pressure the game in such a situation that Jao feels incentivized to do something like attack with the hive to deal with Pelucranos. And then you get your one big turn to resolve a big spell. So happens that Ian had emergent ultimatum on top and that's the biggest spell. Oh yes. So going into sideboarding, let's take a look at what the players have decided to bring in. There's a bunch coming out. From uh, the inside of things, a couple extra things coming in. Some graveyard hate, some hand disruption, some sharks even. And uh, pretty much a similar idea there for Joao. He's taken out the crabs, so no more Krabby Patty is going to be made. <laughs> and uh, brought in a bunch more counter spells. Absolutely. And I want to highlight that one card there. We got Test of Talents. If that ever connects on Emergent Ultimatum, it makes Ian's deck a lot tougher to cross the finish line there with, with removing all the copies. And a nice hand for a rogue's deck. Yeah, that's an excellent looking hand so far. He's Guild Enforcer into, Merf into Merfolk Wind Robber, having a Test of Talents too. And also the Skylands, so... An interesting choice there, uh, whether or not to put back the the temple, the tapped mm -hmm. blue and black source, or just keep Agadim's Awakening so you can kind of curve Thief Skills Enforcer into Merfark Wind Robber. I think I like that a little bit better. Yeah. I think the game plan here for Marrera is just try and mill you out <laughs> as quick as possible and Pelucranos on, <laughs> <laughs> on time once again. And both players can't help but laugh. Yeah, that's what you want to see if you are the <laughs> ultimatum player. Just know no matter what, I'm going to have that as an option when I hit six mana. It's a, a bit of a sigh of relief. Some games you just go through half your deck and you're like, oh my god, all I need is one escape card. Just give me anything against these rogue decks and it's nowhere to be found. Oh man, this duress would have been awesome for Ian, but unfortunately no swamp to take a look in hand there and get rid of that test of talents. Yeah, and that's uh, duresses from these Soltai Ultimatum decks. 
normally you really want to just cast that card whenever you have a chance against most decks. But mm -hmm. in this deck, it's really that card you want to cast right before you cast your big spell or yeah. right before your opponent is able to cast into the story. That is their big spell, so you really want to make sure you can cut that off. But with only two cards in your graveyard, it doesn't seem like an immediate issue right now. So here we're going to fire off the Cultivate, get in the land down just in case of Joy Disruption and Test of Talents will be fired off. Cultivate is going to attempt to be countered, but here's a Mystical Dispute. Protecting cool. the Ramp spell, very, very good find indeed. Very good play there by by Ian. If Some people are really tempted to just play Cultivate and then go get that Swamp and use the Duress. If that would have happened, Tested Talents would have stopped that and mm -hmm. the Fabled Passage would have been a Black Source we need, but ramping is really important here with a Pelucronos in your graveyard. For sure. You want to get to six mana as quick as possible. Try and get these threats on the board. And from Joao's side of things, it's not looking super good at the moment. I mean, there's a Murphy Wind Robber here, and we can start slapping in for big chunks of damage, but really needs to find a little something extra to keep him going. Yeah, really needs the big spell here. And I that Fabled Passage might have just unlocked Pelucranos. And if that's the case, this is really bad news. Is it highlighted? It is! It is! And there is no counter spell to speak of, but even so, Ian is quite happy to keep this graveyard in check. Here comes Pelucronos Unchained. And Marrera really thought about not casting the Merfolk Wind Robber, but realized that it would have been one card short to escape this Pelucronos, but Fabled Passage was the perfect land there. <laughs> awesome find indeed. We're going to see the Skyclave Shade basically just you know, run into a brick wall in the form of Pelucranos, but does chip away at the power and toughness due to how Pelucranos works. And we'll be able to come back with the land draw or the land play from uh, Joao. This is absolutely devastating for Marrera as well. Like you're able, Ian's able to cast to rest, make sure the coast is clear, which we definitely see it is. There is not much going on over there. And mm -hmm. then play Professor Onyx next turn. This uh, this matchup usually doesn't play out like this, but this is some impressive work from Ian. Yeah. Lyris of the Dream Den is problematic, but you've got to like Ian's position right now, having Pelucranos out on the board, being able to just start smacking these creatures on the other side of things. Yeah, and we'll see if Ian even wants to attack without any creatures in the graveyard and without the card threshold for Merfolk Wind Robert to be able to sack and draw a card. Hmm. You know, you might not want to fuel the fire and passes the turn without casting Professor Onyx. Interesting. Yeah, holding on to Professor Onyx just to see what Joao does. Perhaps we'll see an Omen of the Sea on the end step. Here we see a block on the Skyclave Shade. A little Wind Robber will chip in for one unless we see an activation. Yeah, just, just valuing a double activation of Pelucranos higher than casting this powerful Planeswalker, hoping that there isn't a counterspell drawn to just be able to cast it next turn. A valid line here. So can one, I do the... No, Karen? Uh, the one brutal thing here is both green sources are attached uh, to that Wolf Willow Haven. So <laughs> when you activate Pelucranos once, you have to be ready to activate it twice. And with Lurus in hand, you you don't have that luxury of of being able to kill Lurus plus whatever they bring back until you untap. So yeah, has to kill two creatures right now in combat. Yeah, it makes it a little uh, a little clunky, but we'll be able to take care of the entire battlefield here for on Joao's side of things. Skyclave Shade will take Lucranos down to seven. And we do lose the feed from Joao for a little bit, but uh, we will continue with this matchup from Ian's side of things. And we saw Marrera draw into the story there, so we see we know we have Luris. Plus, into the story, um, I can imagine we're going to see uh, 
lure us and bring back Thieves Guild Enforcer this turn as the only other option to play something since there is not eight cards in Ian's graveyard four into the story. Table okay, well, Passage is going to get cracked. Let's go get another Black Source if that is the line we want to go for in uh, Lures of the Dream Den into Thieves Guild Enforcer. It's an island. Okay. So going for the Merfolk Wind Robber then. Yep. And it makes sense. Having only two blue sources uh, and cool. having four black sources is not ideal. And bang, just like last game, Emergent Ultimatum off the top, but there's a few too many black. Nope, we got it. No, yeah. he's good. He's good. Oh, goodness me. On time. Shields down. And Burrell just has to <laughs> put it on the stack and say, all right, yeah. your choice. Similar to Sato last match that we watched, you know, the this deck looks a lot better when you can draw Emergent Ultimatum off the top, just like drawing Winota yeah. off the top in the last round. You certainly want your namesake cards, and he's just taking a, a long think about this. Does he want to get rid of Luris? Now's the chance to do it. Mm. I mean, he could go for, you know, the, 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 the Wrath effects that he has, the Exile effects that would clear the entire side of the battlefield there, so... Yeah, so right here, I think I want um, one of the options is Emergent Ultimatum for All Runs Epiphany, which would mm -hmm. allow you to activate Pelucranos on your extra turn. Valky, which could exile Tybalt, and, uh, you know, and something big there, Cure Best the Sea God, maybe. Or, yeah, just the Shadows Verdict is so good up against these rogues deck. Carvec. <laughs> oh, nice. I mean, sure, if not, why not? You have it. <laughs> Bring it in. I will kill two things on the other side of the board, and basically no rogue will ever stick back on this battlefield, just leaving little Lurus. But uh, besides That's against it, Cadillac. Yeah. Interesting. Vroom vroom. Okay. Yeah, can't really go wrong with these decisions. Two, a combination of two of those cards is going to be devastating for mm -hmm. Marrera, but not looking too hot here for the Demir Rogues. Seltai Ultimatum just proving once again why it was so dominant for so long in Standard. Yeah, absolutely. A really powerful deck that just goes way over the top of the, a lot of these strategies. Mm -hmm. That's fallen off in favor quite a bit lately. Um, you know, but here it is, making a resurgence. We know Ian didn't have the best uh, Swiss performance with it, but making mm -hmm. it look easy here in the in the Eliminator matches. Yeah, it's do or die. So if the deck is going to behave, this is definitely the point in which you wanted to. So Alrin's Epiphany and Essica's Chariot were the selections. Okay. The Skyclave Shade can't block, just the Wind Robber and Lurus on blocking duty up against Big Ol' Pelucranos. Now it seems like we have a nice free attack here since we're going to be taking the next turn, and now all of a sudden we're going to just be... Facing lethal here next turn. And uh, interesting interaction there, since Pelucranos prevents the damage, there is mm -hmm. no lifelink, so no life gain by Luris there. And Skyclave Shade can't block. Mm -mm. So if we fight the Wind Robber... Yeah, basically crew Pelucranos, maybe? Fight the Wind Robber with Pelucranos once he's tapped. Yeah, this is only 11 damage if we were to play Valky as a creature. So it doesn't look like lethal this turn, um, but still plenty to do with Ian's mana here to just play something powerful. And we know there was only the one end of the story in hand as the only card, and it's not even turned on. So mm -hmm. everything looking really rough for Marrera. But Ian is at seven. So there, there is something you have to be prepared for. That Hive is an aggressive creature. So if mm -hmm. Ian taps a little bit too low and Marrera top decks a removal spell, and I guess you'd need a one-mana removal spell to also crew it. So that's a little tough, too. Yeah, so just playing it safe there, copying one of the bird tokens. And it uh, looks like we're going to bring Yorion to hand here. Maybe reset Lucranos. Flicker in the chariot, too. Oh, that's so icky. I love it. That is pretty gross. Yeah. And even if we want, we can sack this Fabled Passage for blue mm -hmm. so, so that we can then put that Wolf Willow Haven Jeez. on it and, and cast a little value omen of the sea mm -hmm. here. A nice little trick from these decks. Yeah. Man, this is just working out so perfectly for Ian. Joao never got a start, really, in this matchup. And this, I mean, what do you do? There's Crippling Fear, potentially. 
Yeah, we saw those sided out, and rightfully so. Mm -hmm. This is not normally how these ultimatum <laughs> decks attack yeah. you. It's usually with much bigger things. Look at that. Ian Burrell, so, so pleased with that result. Tough luck there for Joao Marrera. Never got going, but uh, Ian Burrell and Celtai Ultimatum keep his hopes alive.